Getting into more something more atmospheric. Oh, right now, it, it's getting into the dust and a very mystic, a mystic light here. Right. This is the Longfellow Bridge seen from the other side, sort of from the downriver side. The other one was the upriver side, and. As we all know, weather here is very dramatic and very powerful. And when at dusk things all begin to go into that sort of indigo mode and start to fade away, all detail is stripped away and things become pure atmosphere. This was inspired a little bit by Whistler's mm. uh, pictures of the Thames, you know, where the fog rolls in and all you can see are the atmospherics that are created around yeah, the buildings yeah. and the bridges. Or like Monet, you know, painting the... Lo one could paint the Longfellow Bridge over and over and over again, and it's different <laughs> moods because... Every time. Every time, and, and they're yeah. so dramatic. Yeah, and now it looks like a crystal. It's all wrapped up. Yeah, so, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so um, this um, next painting, um, this is a vista that probably not everybody knows where it is. Um, it, you call it the Museum of Science Bridge. Um, it's actually underneath the, the bridge to the right where the cars drive is the Craigie Bridge and what we're looking under is the viaduct of the Green Line. And I love this vista and you, you made it very sunny normally, it's very dark. Well here again it's about water doubling light. Mm. I love this vista particularly because the water, there, there's water under this bridge at every archway has a little river passing under it and so there's this pearly light that vibrates and shines upward into the arches. Uh, so everything seems to be kind of within a pearly atmosphere, a pearly haze mm. and uh, the geometry again of this bridge, the perspective is so powerful and mm. elegant, yeah. you know, that you really see the distance. So the Museum of Science would be to our right. Where mm -hmm. we're looking is where the road turns left towards Charlestown and um, Cambridge and Somerville would be off to our right and slightly behind us here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and here again, I, I, I'm looking at the shape of these arches. They're reminiscent of some of Van Gogh's paintings of the sanatorium in Arles, which has exactly the same arches. I didn't know that until just looking at the picture now with yeah. you. I'm seeing yeah. the same flat yeah. arch. And, and you know now um, that the North Point area, which is would be to the left, is now a, a wonderful park and with playgrounds so and there's going to be a skate park. And so this is one book end to that park. And that park. And, and then the Zaken Bridge is the other book end. Right. When I lived in Charlestown, I've lived all over the city. Uh, I lived in Cambridge, I lived in Boston, I lived in the South End, I lived in Charlestown. Um, to the left of this bridge, it used to be a vast, vast dump. Dump, dump the Cambridge and dump. Yes. The Cambridge dump. It, and there were miles and miles of abandoned railroad tracks and mm -hmm. ragweed, thousands of. Yeah, of yeah. Of ragweeds growing there. Well, Ca Cambridge and Boston have come a long way. So oh, it has changed so much. <laughs> yes. Um, well, we will now move to an area that has probably not changed as much um, as the North Point Park, uh, which is the lagoon, the Storo Lagoon, where you um, see the, the sailboats in the Court of Honor, as Carl Hagland um, calls it in his book Inventing the Charles River, a very pastoral um, soothing vista. The Court of Honor, that's lovely. I didn't mm -hmm. know it was called that. What I like about this image and what I love about looking around by the Esplanade at the Charles is how surrealistic it is. You know, on the inner side, on the Boston side, it's very, uh, very much these these lagoons and bridges and plantings and gardens and so forth. And then there's a little strip of land and people are sailing almost across the grass. <laughs> yes. There's a wonderful kind of dreamlike quality to it. Yeah. And you have you have another um, another one here which where the daffodils almost come out of the water and I love that because for our tenth anniversary um, two years ago we started to plant daffodils and this fall we'll plant the third set of 10,000 daffodils. 10, 10, so, 30,000 so, daffodils. So we kind of want this, the, the banks of the Charles to be all um, yellow in the spring and you really capture that. 
Well, I love that um, one of the wonderful things around the Charles is that land and water meet yeah. in, in a, a myriad of ways. Yeah. Uh, and now, I'm going to push you from spring back yes. to winter because oh, yes. we have still quite a few paintings and I, we only have a few minutes left, so we might have to uh, rush a little bit through okay. those just to get give different glimpses because the Charles offers so much at different seasons. And we ha I painted a few, uh, as you see, these pictures are all very simplified. Um, yeah, I've removed yeah. every detail. I want only what stays in the mind. Like yeah. when, when I've looked at these places, I don't remember all of the minute details. I remember the atmosphere, the light, yeah, the yeah. sense of motion. And the people are just like the trees. They are <laughs> occupants. They're yeah. there as part of the landscape. Well, let's go so back to, to another occupant of the yes, river here, exactly. a scholar. Exactly. It could be, you know, this could be more or less anywhere yeah. uh, along the river. And um, here's the that Western be, Avenue Bridge. That could be everywhere. We no, see, this we is see Jen Simon in the back there. So that's very specific. Right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's also something so elegant about this bridge. Its spans are very low and long and elegant. And I wanted to capture that. Yeah. And here's a kayaker on the upper Charles, you know, where it starts to open out a little bit, becomes mm. more pastoral, less yeah, urban, yeah. no architecture to be seen. Yeah. And here is Spring uh, on Mem Drive near MIT, where there's a boulevard, a uh, memorial drive going down river on the right and going up river on the left. And this is the big grassy area of ornamental cherry trees between MIT mm. and the river. Yeah. Now, um, this is really uh, something um, you might recognize some of the pictures here. This is a grouping and almost um, a new put those together and, and that in a way it's like the different personalities in the different areas of the river. I love this idea of groupings. Their groupings are all changeable by uh, no di with no difficulty at all. I, I made a s very simple system of little uh, wooden cleats on the wall and each of these paintings is painted on canvas uh, with a heavy um, stretcher uh, mm -hmm. behind. So all one has to do is to hang each picture on a wooden cleat. And when you get tired of this configuration, which has winter and summer and fall and spring images, you just take them off <laughs> and you put up different yeah, ones well, and you mix them around according well, to your mood and the season. I know. I don't, I don't get tired of them at all. And I'm sure... Um, if you have just joined us, the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show with our guest Carol Bolse, um, you can actually go back to YouTube uh, at the Charles River Conservancy and see this show and, and take your time to look at the paintings. Um, or you go to, um, you go to um, her website, um, carolbolse.com, and see many more paintings and, and see some of the, the newer work, the larger screens, yep. they're all up there. And there are pictures of paintings in situ. I've done a lot of commissions for specific places, um, private and some public, and uh, there are uh, the screens, which are freestanding works uh, that are like semi-architectural paintings. Uh, and there are all kinds of things on the website. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a wonderful website. It's very rich. And um, so we're coming to the end of our show. So I want to thank you, Carol, for, thank for you, your Nata. wonderful paintings. Thank, thank you for you. coming here today. And you have opened my eyes to a new, a new Charles. And I hope many um, other people will enjoy that as well. They'll get to see your art. Uh, we will have the, the art also available. They need, we will put that on our website. So please um, um, join us in, on our website and join us again another time on the show. And thank you very much. And this is how you find us on the web. And Carol, thank you very much. Thank for you, coming. Renata. <laughs>